Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be doing what I claimed, I thought anyway, would be the best player to draft for this type of draft, where we do all the forwards are one player type. So we're going to be doing the two-way forward today. Let's find out if it is in fact the meta, or if I was totally wrong. The way things work, I'm probably totally wrong, but... I guess only time will tell and we're going to find out in the very near future, but I am randomizing the team here. So I'm going to go ahead and stop right about now. Detroit. Okay. I don't remember the last time we've had Detroit. Random guest says we're going to get pick number 12. Let's see if I'm even close. I feel like it took longer than normal, but if you chop off the one at the beginning, I nailed it. We're pick number two. So McDavid's going to be gone, but then we have a world of possibilities here. Maybe I won't even take a forward as my first player. Yeah, my first player is going to be Kale McCarr, 92 overall. I feel like I've never had the opportunity to take him, so today is the day. Patrice, he is on a 6.8 deal. I don't think he's signed yet, actually. I mean, by the time this video comes out, he may have, but I don't know if he has signed with the Bruins yet or not. I could also take Kadri, or I could take JT Miller. Yeah, they're both two-way forwards as well. JT Miller is a left winger. I feel like Bergeron might not go right away, but I'm not going to trust it. I'll, I'll take him now. I 100% forgot that we basically get back-to-back -back picks, so I'm going to take JT Miller now to be the left winger for that first line, and now we've got a set of abilities there. If we can get a right winger to go with them, that will be huge, and I might take Giroux for that, because he's got five abilities, but oh no, he's definitely not a two-way forward. I almost forgot. I do that often, by the way, if it's your first time. I'm here it's you can't you can't make that up 88 overall he's got an x-factor two way forward right winger get on the team i will take 70 discipline tyler bertuzzi ryan mcdonough is going to be the next pick he will go very well with kale mccarr watch them somehow get like a minus three i wouldn't even be that surprised i'm going to take Suter next 3.6 and you know he's every time i see him i pretty much take him just because of the contract he's got abilities he is the full package brian rust can be our second line right winger at 3.5 oh or what about perron is he a two-way forward he is that got tricky he's making 500k more but he does have two abilities i'm gonna take perron and i'm really gonna hope that rust is still there because we do get back-to-back -back picks so i just gotta hope that they did didn't they that's brutal. Yep, he went the very next pick. Way to go, Pittsburgh. They brought him back home. But joke's on them because Alex Kalorn is still here. I mean, we are running out of cap space pretty quickly here, I gotta say, considering I haven't taken a goalie yet. Oh no. James Reimer, don't let me down, buddy. I'm signing you for sure. He's on the screen. You guys know the rule. Timothy Jimothy must be selected regardless of our cap situation. Teddy Bluger, he will be our second line centerman at 81 overall. Mostly because of his salary. Or perhaps Jason Dickinson will take that spot. I don't want... Yeah, because Fax is making 3.2, 2.6. It's a little bit less. You know, it makes a difference, I suppose. We need to fit seven players into $16 million. This is going to be a tricky one, but we'll get it done. I'm going to start by taking Phoenix Copley, who, fun fact, was born in the North Pole. I really want to take Yandel, but I feel like I take him all the time. So I'm going to try to challenge myself a bit here. Same with Chara. I feel like I have taken Gustafson before, but definitely not as much as the other two. So let's... Let's switch it up at least a tiny bit. Leafs legend Colin Blackwell will be our next selection. I'm going to take Kevin Stenland. I think it maybe would have made more sense to have taken two-way defenders for this draft, but it doesn't really matter. It's a specifically two-way forwards that we're going for. So I'm going to take Salo, I think, just because seems like an interesting pick because of all the picks we've made we can pretty much afford anyone so i just got to find a player who i actually really want here it doesn't matter about salary anymore silverberg and smith are both two-way forwards so i will be selecting one of them it's just a matter of which one silverberg's got the better defensive category i'm going with him if we check our drafted defenseman i have one right-handed defenseman and then Oh, wow. Okay, so we need a right-handed defenseman for sure. Both of them have 90 discipline. Strawman has the better defensive category, though. I think I'll go with Strawman mostly as well because we can afford it. So I want to try and get kind of close to the cap. Boom! That's our team. Let's go put it together. What on earth? If I do preferred lines, they keep Kalorn scratched. Are you kidding me? And now they want him on the fourth line. What is going on here? Okay, you're getting moved up to there for sure. I might keep Bertuzzi on the third line, truthfully. JT Miller is going to be the first line left winger. That was the original plan. 
So I want him up there. I'm gonna run Pavelski on the second line. If I put Oshie up here, it gets a plus two and we actually need a second line center because we don't really have one. So it's gonna be Pavelski, Perron, and Kalorn, which I think is an amazing second line. And then we have Oshie, Bergeron, and Miller on the first. Bertuzzi, Bluger, and Silverberg on the third line. Blackwell, Stenland, and Dickinson. I'm gonna try to get Salo to grow throughout the year. So I'm gonna play him on this second pairing. He's gonna be playing with Suter. If I do that, it's a zero. So might as well, it's worth the risk. We get a plus five from Makara McDonough. Things you love to see. That. And in net, we got Reimer with Copley. So, how well are we gonna do? That's the real question. I will say that Makar gets the most points. I believe that's gonna happen. And I'll say he gets 78. We're more of a defensive team, so we're probably gonna shut teams down more than anything. But I think that Makar will get the most points, as I mentioned. I think we can make the playoffs, so I'll say that we do it with 47 wins. I just moved Stenland out of the middle. I realize he is not a centerman, and we have two other centers on the line, so I made a small change. But other than that, I think we are ready to rock and roll. We went 5-1-1 one, one in the preseason, which means literally nothing. Not off to the best start here. We need to pick it up real quick. Detroit's kind of turning it around here, but nothing dramatic. We should have to get some more wins if we want to stand any chance at the playoffs. But I think that we're on a pretty good pace so far. We're second in the division right now, which is shocking to me. Now we're talking. I see five wins in a row there. And as I mentioned it, we go two L's in a row. Will it be three? No, it will not. 29, 18, and five at the break. Third in the Atlantic division. It's looking like we are going to be a playoff team, thankfully. However, I have not accounted for the post-trade deadline collapse. So maybe not. Why? Why are these players on the block? No, I didn't do that. Why are we putting them on the block, guys? Truthfully, there's not a whole lot here. We have... Our players, and that's about it. And Hurdle, but he's a sniper, so we can't even go after him. wonder if we could find a trade. Oh, we could. It would be two draft picks for him. I can't do it, obviously, but, you know, that would have been interesting. Oh, it says he sold. They got a first, Zach Dean, and Reichel. In exchange for Hurdle, Murray, and two others. 35 wins at the trade deadline. Let's find out how the rest of the season goes. Will we see the post-trade deadline collapse? Moment of truth. It kind of seems to be trade-offs right now. We're going one for one for the most part. And I'll take 50. I'll take 500 after the deadline because it does not normally go that well. Yeah, all right. Okay, sure. Why not? Are, like, are you kidding me, man? You have to be joking. We still made it in, but what a joke. Detroit finished fourth in the Atlantic Division with 93 points and 43 wins. So I was four off in my prediction, but we did make the playoffs. Pittsburgh won the President's Trophy. Pretty sure that's our first round opponent. 115 wins. They had Palat, McDavid, and Line. Rust, Duchesne, and Brown. Wow. Fair enough. Well played, Pittsburgh. It was indeed the top 16 teams that made it to the playoffs in this simulation. McCarr only had 58 points on a plus five line chemistry. That is like absurd. But anyway, I digress. 73 points from Bergeron, 72 from Pavelski, 66 from Oshi and Perron, 58 from Miller. And I'll just scroll through the rest of the team here. I feel like I can't speak English today, by the way, carrying over from the last couple of videos I recorded. So there's going to be a few videos coming out where... I am struggling. A 914 from Jim. 35 wins, two shutouts. I know his name's James. Copley didn't do so hot. 895, 89 and 1 with two shutouts. Thankfully, Reimer will be the only starting goalie in the playoffs. Unless. No, injuries are off. Can't happen. Jake Ottinger on the President's Trophy winning Pittsburgh Penguins has the most wins with 44. Seven shutouts as well, so he led for that. A 920 save percentage. He killed it. We got a 919 from Vili Huso and a 918 from Pavel. Good performances. Very solid. Let's check out the defensers. I'm not even kidding when I say I went to comment on what I just said there and messed that up. And that part's getting cut out because that was unsavable. That was tragic. So now you guys know I'm not kidding. I am not kidding. I genuinely just can't speak right now. So you're going to have to deal with me for the time being. Hopefully, you know, during editing and whatnot... I can kind of patch it up to be decent. Colorado lost Kale McCarr during the fantasy draft. They picked up Adam Fox and he got 74 points. McCarr's down here with 58. Hughes got 66. We got 61 from Doughty Hedman and Carlson. 
Maury with 60, and then we got Taves with 59. How about forwards? Anyone break 100? Yes, we got a couple players. McDavid with 104, and Ovechkin with 103. Nate Mack was right there at 99. We got 48 goals from Ovechkin, which looks like it is going to be enough for the Rocket Richard. Let's sort just to be sure. Yeah, Kane was there with 46 and Nate Mack, but he still gets it. I can only imagine us getting absolutely rinsed by the Penguins as they were the President's Trophy winners. Their team looks insane. Oh, I did not see that coming. We lost the first two games and I was like, yep, that's the way it's going to go. And we end up losing to New Jersey. But I don't care. We put out the President's Trophy winning Pittsburgh Penguins and the Seattle Kraken win the Stanley Cup. 17 points in 12 games from Patrice, you legend. What a certified mad lad. I just want to check out the standings real quick here. Where did Seattle finish in the league? They finished third, so they had a good year. And... They had Olafson, Stamkos, and Pasta. Robert Thomas, Mantha, and Dolan, Sorelli. Okay, they have a good team. They do have a very good team, to be fair. So, well played to them. Solid draft. We already know the team awards. Well, I, you didn't know Tampa Bay, because we didn't see who faced them in the finals. But other than that, we knew them all. Ovech... I can't, like, what is going on? I don't know if I've been recording too much or what, and my brain's just getting fried, but holy crap. I am big struggling. Connor McDusty with the Art Ross and the Hart. Fox gets the Norris. Nate Mack with the Lady Bing. Bunting gets the Calder. Pasta with the Con Smythe. Ottinger with the Vesna and the Jennings. Carlo gets the Masterton. LaRose takes home the Jack Adams, Sydney the Kidney with the Selkie. McDusty gets the Lindsay as well. And Ovi, there he is, finally found him with the Rocket Richard. Playoff tree, please get me out of here. There you go. How many sweeps? I don't even know if I want to count them because I'm probably going to count wrong. I see two. I think there was two. And they were both Tampa Bay. So that is good for them. And they didn't go to seven games until the Stanley Cup Finals. And they ended up losing to the Kraken. But yeah, you always want to see a seven-game Stanley Cup final. That is great stuff. Well, anyways, thank you for watching and somehow bearing with me during that. I mean, it probably won't be as bad for you guys, but I have just been dumbfounded with myself over the last couple of videos, or maybe even few videos that I've been recording. The stuff that has been spewing out of my mouth is surreal. So thank you guys for watching. I'll see you soon.